Hi everyone, I'm super excited to film this video today because I had these little um, watercolour um, half pants sitting in my studio for a while just before I left on holiday. I have received them from um, Jackson's and thank you very much for sending them over and I have basically reached out to them because I was keen to try their watercolor now the product that I absolutely love that is by their own brand is the Jackson's um, quill brush and I have two of the 10 zero and they are like my favorite brushes and then I also have the two size which I haven't used too much just because I work on a smaller scale but I wanted to have a bigger one just in case one day I want to try something big but they are fantastic um, to to work with they're just really fun I love the look of them as well and the design I also find that these brushes are quite affordable so all the plus points um, are ticked for me uh, with this 10 zero quill brush. I particularly li like this size um, because it just works well for me. And like I said, I don't usually work on, on large scales. So this is a good, good size. All right. So as I said, I wanted to then try out their watercolors because I thought if I if I love the, the brush so much, then, you know, I am um, intrigued to see how the watercolors are. So um, they have sent me this uh, adorable palette. So it's a set uh, that I think um, on their website retails for £28. And um, so what you get is this little portable palette. And if you want a comparison, just to know exactly the size of it, if you have the Prima um, watercolor set, then it is exactly the same. It's literally identical inside, outside, uh, and from all sides, it's exactly the same palette as the Prima um, set. So you get 12 um, half pens and I will compare the sizes of these half pens to um, other half pens just in case if you want to buy them separately so that you know um, roughly what size they are because obviously depending on brands um, like Schmincke, Windsor & Newton palettes um, differ slightly in, in the size even though they're half pens. So apart from the half pens which I will go through the num um, the names with you they also sent me um, a tube which I have specifically requested because I wanted to show you how beautiful their tubes are and they have this kind of handmade vibe about them which I really love so I love the design and I specifically wanted to show you their tubes for that reason so this tube is 21 milliliters so it's a good size tube and um, you get basically a hand drawn swatch which has like a black and a white window in there so you can see what it looks like uh, on both and then the sticker seems like hand um, applied or stuck to the tube so I don't know I find it quite neat at the back you get the um, I believe this is the number for the light fastness the pigment number and the transparency um, so this particular color is quinacridon purple and it's the PR122 so uh, when it comes to the half pens you get the name of the obviously the the color and then on the side you get the number of the actual paint you get again light fastness transparency and the pigment number so in this case it's py3 so before doing the swatches i'm quite quickly going to tell you the colors and their specific pigments um, so this one is lemon yellow by the way I have arranged them in the order as they show on their website so 
um, we're going to go in the same order. Lemon Yellow PY3, Cadmium Yellow Deep PY35. Right, so Cadmium Red Light is PR108, Carmine PY19, Cobalt Blue PB28, Ultramarine Deep PB29, Taylor Blue PB15, Taylor Green Deep PG7 and PB15, Yellow Ochre PY43, Venetian Red PY43 and PR101 in reversed order. Burnt Amber PBR7 and Ivory Black PBK9. So basically the only colors that have two pigments in them are these Taylor Green Deep and Venetian Red. The, the rest are all single pigments which is great. Uh, but basically uh, I am ready to unwrap these little cute um, things and I think this time I might keep the wraps because I like the look of them and I might stick them into an art journal and do the swatches that way. So let's start. Um, so this is the lemon yellow. Now I'll probably fast forward this bit for you because I don't think you specifically need to see every single oop, um, half pan being open but for the first one I just want to tell you that there is no number or title on the actual half pan so keep that in mind also they um, are cakes so they come out of the pan easily um, and the way they are made is usually in a strip um, like a long strip of the paint and then they're cut and then they're placed into these so this is uh, it's called a cake um, some paints or some um, brands prefer to pour their paints into the pans uh, and some um, do it this way. So that's that and I'm going to do it in the order so that I don't um, confuse them. Also I'm going to quickly compare the size of the pans to my other half pans. So let me just get those for you. Okay, so I pulled out a few half pans to compare. First of all, I'm comparing with the Prima um, watercolor and they are identical with the Prima, both from the sides, the bottom, the height, everything is exactly the same. And um, the next one is Schminke. So the Schminke are always slightly different size. So first of all, the, the actual pan is a little bit thicker, the plastic is thicker. And um, as you can see, they are taller than Schminke. If you can see maybe on the black background. So they are Um, basically they are taller than Schminke, slightly shorter than Schminke and that's that. And then uh, these are just the empty half pans which you can buy from Jackson's and they are the, exactly the same actually half pan that they use to um, to put these in. So that's that. So we have exactly the same as Prima and empty half pens from Jackson's. Now the final thing I want to compare it to or actually see is the portable painter because if you remember um, these half pens are slightly different and I'll try to get them out somehow.
so this is that one and it is a little bit smaller just a tiny bit um, so let's see if it actually would fit in um, so it doesn't fit in very well into the portable painter because it's sticking out a little bit. I mean, I guess you could still use it. You would still be able to close it. Just um, it doesn't go all the way down. That is basically it for comparison. I don't have um, I don't have the Windsor and Newton. Actually, I realized I don't have a single half pan. I only have tubes. Okay, let's continue with unwrapping. Okay, so I have gone ahead and uh, stuck all the labels in my sketchbook and I'm going to do a little kind of swatch right underneath, very simple and then on the next page I might try to blend the colors and see what happens. So first of all, I'm also going to squeeze out some of this queen purple and about here. So this one is transparent and it's APR 122. So I'm going to start by spraying these cakes. Um, a little bit here as well. The colors look lovely in the pan, nice and bright. I'm just going to clip in my sketchbook. Okay, so I'm good to go. Let's do this. I'm using one of those kind of square brushes. What's this one called? It's just a synthetic. Um, it, they're good for swatching things if you want like a line type of thing oh I can see this is very pigmented very creamy so this is lemon yellow right there and then we're going to have this one is cadmium yellow deep And so this one isn't too transparent. Next one is Cadmium Red Light. It's a beautiful red. I really hope it looks as stunning as it does here in the pan. Yes, it's gorgeous. Beautiful color. Next one is Carmine. They're very creamy. I'm quite surprised. Usually cakes are a bit more difficult to wake up. So I'm doing a full on um, swatch. Like I said, this isn't about a gradient. I just want to see the color. So it's very, very pigmented. So the next one was cobalt blue. And then the last on the top row we have ultramarine deep that's beautiful okay so moving on to Talo blue which is just at the bottom here oh my gosh this is beautiful it's like childhood turquoise felt tip color love it and then we have Taylor 
green deep also beautiful next one is yellow ochre so this one generally don't expect it to be transparent ochre is hard to find transparent but some brands do have them Venetian red is up next that's the Venetian red there we go next one is burned amber so I can see it's transparent and finally we have ivory black let's see how this one is it's supposed to be opaque yeah so it's a full-on black okay so so far so good bright beautiful colors gorgeous so i'm going to try and mix them on the next page and see what sort of happens, how they behave. So I'm going to use my beloved Quill, Jackson's Quill brush. And also I will swatch actually the Gunacrid and Purple. Let me do this real quick here at the top. So that's a beautiful color, mind you. Stunning. Okay, so round about here. I'll do a little swatch and then maybe try and mixing it with some blues let's see how about ultramarine deep that should give us a nice bit of a purple yeah that's quite pretty all right then I want to do I'm going to go into this color here and see how it would mix with a bit of yellow. And maybe a bit of red underneath, like so, to see what kind of oranges we could get then I want to do some green over here and maybe let's see what a bit of this ochre kind of turns in a bit of a sub green really I'm just gonna try and mix it up a bit more yeah that's beautiful or well, kind of like an olive green beautiful color and let's try I'm gonna try this green again but this time with the carmine so the phthalo green deep I want to mix with the carmine to see what kind of gray or neutral I could get with it. That's quite pretty actually. Yeah, that's a beautiful gray. And let's just for fun try the Taylor green again this time with lemon yellow that's a beautiful light color I want to try this Taylor green again but this time with the final yellow which is the more opaque type of yellow um, 
the cadmium yellow deep and I want to see what kind of green I can get with that. I love mixing greens. That's an interesting green but definitely on an opaque side. Beautiful colour though. Yes, yeah, so they mix beautifully. I'm going to dry it up quickly and show you a close-up of these colours. Alright, so they all seem to be dry now. I really like the fact that the brightness of the wood colour remained even after drying because that's obviously the colour shift is always quite important. So that's a good sign. Um, they're really super, super bright. I mean, you can see the colours, even when they are mixed together, they still remain quite beautifully bright and um, sort of translucent. Um, however, of course, if you're going to mix a transparent colour with an opaque colour, um, for example, like here we did, um, you can get, also here, you can get that sort of opaque um, all over kind of result. However, I really love what has happened here with a bit of water, how the blooming looks. It just looks so stunning to me. And generally with um, low quality watercolors, you could never achieve this. So that's another good sign for me personally. Um, I love this color that I mixed together with the Taylor Green Deep and Cadmium Yellow Deep. So. really love this one sort of close to sub green i'm pretty sure you could mix a very close color to sub green in fact yeah and the gray i absolutely love the gray that you can mix together this is like my type of my type of a gray very very beautiful so i hope you enjoyed the swatching and it gave you a better idea or perhaps even introduced some of you who didn't hear about jackson's watercolors um you know now that maybe you have seen how they work and price-wise they're quite good as well so give it a go and see what happens so that is it for today thanks for watching and see you soon